Yes, gentlemen over there, please. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, first, I just wanted to thank you guys for meeting the public because as our representatives, it's good that you stay here. Nothing for that, just that you're supposed to represent us, so you should listen to what we're saying. But secondly, this entire debate started when that shooting occurred. Mm -hmm. And 26 people were murdered. And if it was really about security, there would be an armed policeman in front of every school every day since then, and there isn't. And so, because of money, because of budget, what is the real concern here? And in my lifetime, there's been, you know, talk about the most protected person in the world, the President of the United States. In my lifetime, one was killed, one was shot at, one was shot. So the reality is, no matter what you do here, what, what you guys do up there, nothing you can do will prevent a criminal from carrying out their plans. There's absolutely nothing you can do to stop it. One of the things that can stop it is a responder. We call policemen first responders, and, and they are. It's all firemen, it's all EMS, and we, we love them, they're great. But the reality is they're second responders. The real first responder is the person who's there. The teacher was a first responder. She gave her life trying. Now, if she was armed, maybe she would have died anyway. But maybe she would be alive, and maybe 20 of those kids would be alive. Who's to say? None of you, excuse me, I want to finish. And I come to you. The, uh, with this honestly. I'm a military veteran. I was a weapons expert in the military. I've seen the dark side. And I am, for the past 14 years, been a very prolific firearms instructor here in the state. And I've taught many people in New Canaan and all across the state. And what amazes me is how little our legislators do know about firearms, such an important topic. A lot of what you said was wrong, but you said you might, and that's okay. <laughs> but, I mean, none, none of us are experts in everything. We don't expect you to be. But the bottom line is, is that we do have, as you said, the Second Amendment in the, in, in, uh, of the Federal the Bill of Rights, and Connecticut's 15th, Article 15, which is very clear. It says nothing about hunting. It says nothing about sports. It says a citizen has the right to protect the state and himself. That's all it says. I like that. Because you know what? We live in a very strange world. And 75% of the crime that's committed in our state and around our country is done by people who've committed the crime before. And they get out of prison early, like the Pettit family. You think Dr. Pettit would have liked the opportunity to kill those two SOBs? I think he might have. Instead of losing, instead of losing his entire life, just because these two guys were let out of prison early, that met in a halfway house that's funded by our tax money, decided, hey, that woman likes an easy, looks like an easy target. But you know what? To, to all of you, you all look like an easy target to me. But I'm not a criminal. And there's a lot of people that can say that. And somebody can walk into this room night, right now and do all kinds of damage, and all they can do is write about it and have another stupid debate. I like the idea that as a citizen, forgetting about being a veteran, I mean, it doesn't make us special. As a citizen, I have the right to defend myself. I have the, the right to make that choice. And what I really like about it is the same way where a mutually assured destruction kept the, the United States and the Russians from blowing each other to hell in the 60s. The same criminals who are really just business people, they go out and their job is to get something that you have. And they size you up like that because they learn this in prison, which is really a college for criminals because there's no rehabilitation in our prison system. So they come out and they size up a situation, but in Connecticut they gotta worry a little bit because they don't know, are you armed or are you not? So it gives them a little room to think because their cost of doing business is getting caught or getting hurt. And the only way that's gonna happen is if somebody can stand up to them and do something about it. And I tell you what, you guys with your Obama signs and I hate guns, you're advertising for these guys. Hey, let's go to that house because there's no guns there. Uh, hold on a second. Let's hey, keep it to the subject. I'm, I'm just making it. All right, don't get all your guns. Let's not go get all the guns. Let's keep it to the subject. But the reality is, is that the criminal element doesn't really know. They don't know, and that's the only thing that separates us from being victims is the fact that they don't know. But if they didn't know that none of us were able, none of us had the ability to exercise that right, then you know what? It will be fair game. And for a guy, it's easy. 
I'm a guy. I could still wrestle on the ground. For women, you got another issue. Since we've been in this room, how many women have been raped? How many women have been stalked? How many women have been attacked? You can't count that high. Right? Around this country, in this state, everywhere. And I'll tell you what, there's plenty of women right now that love the idea that I have the ability to protect myself. And they thank God that they have that choice. It's all about choice, free choice. So what are and your suggestions then? What's your suggestions? Is to just How live as good a live as good a life as you can and and don't be a criminal. So I'm talking about I'm talking about